The Tennessee Vols are back, baby. Josh Heupel is taking this team on a revenge tour for all the sins that were committed against them in the Pruitt and Butch era. And, and this team is going to cause some havoc in the SEC, especially after this week. But watch out when we go and play in Sanford Stadium as well. But, of course, I have a biased opinion. On the other hand, we got Alabama. Their starting quarterback's gone down. They they found a way to win against Texas A&M. And, of course, they're one of the best teams that goes without being said in college football. But before we get into it, we're prefacing this video by saying Bryce Young's going to play. If uh, Alabama's forced to play Milro, they're going to lose. That's just a fact. But, Drew, kicking it to you, we're going to get into Alabama first, talking about their offense. Of course, O'Brien's calling the plays, and the criticism for this Alabama offense has been they're not taking many shots down the field, too many screen plays. So when you look at this Alabama offense, and, of course, we know they're going to have to be able to keep up with Tennessee's offense, who's going to be putting up a bunch of points no matter what. What is this Alabama gonna, Alabama's offense going to have to do to get the win? Yeah, so Bryce Young is supposedly playing, and I think he has to play. I mean, I don't think there's any situation Alabama could put Jalen Milrow in and have him come in and win the game. I mean, he's a great runner, of course, but when it comes to passing the football, he just doesn't really have it. In this game in particular, when you're playing Tennessee, who has a solid run defense but a very questionable secondary, it's time you're going to have to take shots over the top. You're going to have to find a quarterback or have a quarterback that can carve up this secondary, which I think Bryce Young's capable of doing. And as far as, you know, the play calling being a little vanilla in terms of running a lot of screens, kind of keeping everything underneath in the passing game, I think a lot of it's been having to do with the receivers. I mean, Alabama has really good receivers across the board. There's no denying that. All of them are very talented. But I don't know if they have that one true speed guy like your Henry Ruggs or that 4-2, 4-3, 40 runner at receiver that can just run deep and have an Alabama have a quarterback that can just launch it down there. Or, you know, a lot of those receivers that we know would catch a slant and break it free for 70, 80 yards. And Alabama has talented receivers, but like I said, they don't have that world-class speed to catch these intermediate routes and break a tackle and bust it for 80. So, you know, the explosive plays have been really limited for Alabama this year, I feel like, as compared to years past. Obviously, Jameer Gibbs is really good. If Jameer Gibbs gets to the second level or gets around the outside and breaks the contain of the defense, I mean, good luck. I mean, he's going to be gone. But other than that, I don't really know where Alabama's explosive plays are really going to come from. I don't really know if there's a receiver on that team that's really going to you know, be the difference maker in terms of he's the go-to guy. Yeah, and that's definitely going to be a problem if they don't have a guy that can step up this game against Tennessee because Cedric Tillman, our number one receiver, was out. And our receivers definitely stepped up to the task. You saw number 11 was playing absolutely out of his mind. And that's, if, that's definitely going to translate into this next game. Uh, the Tennessee fans went and took over Death Valley. Rocky Top was playing over all those, you know, rowdy LSU fans. And, you know, Rocky Top is going to be playing 100 times louder this game. These fans are about to be crazy as hell. Alabama's going to have to be locked in. You know, it wouldn't surprise me if they're going to have some early penalties, so some false starts, some miscommunications, just because it's going to be so loud in there. But, you know, like you mentioned, uh, Gibbs for uh, Alabama, we're definitely going to have to key on him. And, you know, our linebackers have been – an issue for our team since week one and they've been improving but they're really going to have to you know focus on their keys and you know stay uh, focused on him because Alabama does a great job of getting him the ball in a bunch of different ways uh, using misdirections motions you know throwing them to the backside, doing whatever they got to do to get him the ball so we're going to have to key on that and also in the secondary our corners played a lot better last week that was one thing that really impressed me and I think that it has to do with the whole team as a whole playing much better uh, a rising tide raises all boats so there is so much momentum going for this Tennessee team that I don't think it matters who Alabama has at quarterback. I think that Heupel's got these guys primed to, you know, beat this Alabama team. Yeah, and it's definitely going to be no easy task for Alabama. And if, Alabama, if an Alabama fan tells you or if you hear an Alabama fan saying they're uh, not worried about this Tennessee game, they're straight up lying to you. I mean, don't get me wrong. Alabama is still a great team regardless of what happened last night when they played Texas A&M. I mean, Alabama did everything possible to lose that game. You had three fumbles, one interception for four turnovers total, two missed field goals. I mean, for Alabama to do all that and still find a way to win an SEC uh, football game, they're a good team. And there's no denying that. So I don't want people to come in here and say Alabama's just, you know, you can write them off after the last game because you're going to see a really good Alabama team in this game. I think the players are going to be ready to play. And I think the whole deal with Jalen Milrow and it's when you, when you have a backup quarterback in, it does something to your team. 
you know, I can't really explain it uh, team by team. Every team is different, but there is definitely a different feel, you know, across the board when your Heisman quarterback goes down and you have to play a backup, if that makes any sense at all. But, you know, if there's any team that's really going to be able to t- test Tennessee, especially defensively and in the secondary, I think Bryce Young and Alabama can do that. And, then to, you know, Tennessee's secondary still has a little bit of questions. I, they did play better against LSU, I will admit. They gave up 300 yards, but J- Jaden Daniels, I don't know if that's the LSU's quarterback name, he still had 300 uh, yards. But but he threw a lot of passes in that game, and he was only averaging like 6.7 yards per pass. So, honestly, for a quarterback to throw 45-something passes for 300 yards, I think the secondary did a pretty good job. Obviously, the Florida game draws a little bit of concern. Anthony Richardson had over 400 passing yards of that game. So if I'm Tennessee, that is, you have to limit the big plays for sure. And you saw a lot of the big passing plays that Florida got. It was good coverage initially, but, you know, Anthony Richardson was so mobile that he was able to break free from the pocket and the cornerbacks would kind of get lost looking in the backfield. And uh, Anthony Richardson was able to find receivers deep. And that's how he got a lot of his yards. And Alabama and Bryce Young, I mean, that he's really good at doing that. If he breaks free from pressure, he's going to keep his eyes downfield. And Tennessee cannot lose sight of these uh, Alabama wide receivers at all. You can't give them free plays like that if you're playing uh, good coverage initially. Yeah, that's definitely going to be one of our main keys to victory, especially defensively, is getting pressure on Bryce Young and and making him get rid of the ball and not let him get comfortable and and make his reads. Uh, Our first key, though, defensively, is going to be to stop that run. Because if we can stop the run and keep him in, you know, third and medium, third and long, we're going to be able to send pressure. And and you saw in the LSU game um, a couple of the times where LSU was in the two-minute drill – Every time we sent pressure like three plays in a row and it got there three plays in a row. It's the same, the same pressure. So we have the guys that can do it. This D-line has impressed me every single game this season. And this is definitely going to be their biggest task. And it's definitely going to be, you know, they're going to have to pull off an upset. It's no secret to anybody, but it's in Neyland, Neyland Stadium, Stadium. And I've already said, you know, all the momentum is going towards Tennessee. Alabama has had a, a couple games this year where they should have rolled over these teams and it's been a closed game. And, if you think that Tennessee is just going to roll over, even if they do get down by two scores, you know, you're wrong. Tennessee can put up points like that. So Alabama is going to have to stay on their toes throughout four quarters. And all Tennessee needs is their defense to bend and not break. Their defense can give up 400 yards throwing the ball. When they get into the red zone, they have to force field goals and not touchdowns because you're, the Tennessee offense is going to put up points. All you need to do as a defensive guy is give up three and not seven. Bend but don't break. Yeah, 100%. I agree with that. I mean, Tennessee's defense, I mean, it's no secret that they're not great, but if they're able to, you know, have drives that can hold Alabama to three and not seven, like you said, yeah, those are all really good points. Tennessee is going to have that bend, not break mentality. And then looking over to the Alabama defense, Alabama has a lot of good elite pass rushers. Obviously, everyone knows Will Anderson, one of the best defensive players in college football. I think Alabama is going to have that kind of have the same game plan that Tennessee has defensively, and that's getting a lot of pressure on Hendon Hooker. Uh, a couple times, LSU was able to bring some pressure on Hendon Hooker, and he's a really good job of escaping and you know picking up some yards with his legs and Alabama's definitely going to have to take him serious you know through the ground too I mean Hendon Hooker's obviously a really good passer and the Tennessee offense in terms of passing and running the ball are clicking in all cylinders but under no circumstance I think Hendon Hooker's uh, mobility is a little bit underrated in my opinion he's able to break free and he has the speed to you know get 30 40 yards that the defense allows him so if I'm Alabama you got to be careful when you're sitting that pressure but I do think that sitting pressure is definitely going to be really key for Alabama because there are some times where Tennessee likes to go over the middle of the field. Sometimes they like to take a shot deep. And if Alabama kind of catches them at the right time and sends pressure, I think that could really you know, give Alabama really a big step in terms of eliminating those big plays. Uh, but with that being said, I guess we'll go ahead and get into our predictions. It's so hard to kind of pick games like this. One, because Alabama, we don't really know – the true identity of Alabama. We've seen them play really good in some games. We've seen them play okay in some games or subpar to Alabama standards. And then you have Tennessee kind of the same. Tennessee's had a couple games you look at and you're like, damn, this Tennessee team is really, really good. And then you have games like a Pitt game where they won an overtime against a Pitt team that lost to Georgia Tech. So it's kind of like you don't really know what team's going to show up, especially in a big game like this. Both teams have played in big games. You just, it's so hard to pick this. You know, the line's seven and a half in Alabama's favor. I think I'd be a little bit more comfortable in taking Alabama if it was six and a half or less. But I think the atmosphere in Tennessee is going to be really crazy. I think it's going to be tough for any team to go into Neyland, regardless of how talented they are, and win by more than a touchdown. I'm not saying that Alabama can't do that because, of course, they can. But in this case in particular, 
I'm going to say with Bryce Young, Alabama gets the win, but I don't know if they win by more than a touchdown. This could be a... This could be the game of the year in terms of coming down to the wire, and it could come down to the last offensive drive, whether it's Alabama or Tennessee. I think this is going to be a really close game. It's going to be a great game and a game why people watch SEC football. I like Tennessee to cover, but it's just so hard for me to, to pick against Alabama. Yeah, I hear you. I think in this game, you could say this about any game in the SEC especially, but it's going to come down to the offense and the defensive line for Tennessee. The defensive line is going to have to get pressure. Even when we're not sending pressure, even if we're just sending three or four guys, we're going to be have to, going to have to be able to get pressure on Bryce Young. And then on the other side of the ball, we're going to have to be able to keep Will Anderson uh, off of Hendon Hooker. And if, if that's the case, we can beat Alabama. It's at Neyland Stadium. The crowd's going to be going insane. And Alabama, Alabama has shown – chinks in their armor so I think that this is the game and, and we are the team that's going to capitalize on, on the mistakes that Alabama's made because you've hinted to it they've shown mis- they, they've made mistakes they've you know fumbles and, and all these other mishaps that Alabama doesn't normally have and I think that you can't do that against this Tennessee team because we are going to score almost every time we touch the ball it, it, I don't even think it's going to matter if pressure gets there that's one thing all we got to do is keep, is keep the pressure off of Hen and Hooker. With all that being said, it's obvious who I'm taking. It's been obvious throughout the whole video. Go Vols. Um, Tennessee is going to win this game. My hubris is telling me like by seven or more, but that just sounds crazy. So I'm just, I think it's going to be, I know it's going to be a close game. But give me Tennessee. Look, and Tennessee can 100% win this game by more than a touchdown if Alabama plays like they did last week. I mean, under no circumstance can you turn the ball over four times, miss two field goals, and expect to win every conference game. Nonetheless, more or less against a top 10 SEC opponent. Tennessee now ranks six. I mean, this is no team to take lightly. You have to limit the mistakes. And, you know, usually you look at a Nick Saban coach team and you're like, okay, well, you know, Alabama's built for games like this. They're meant to play on the road, and they know what they're dealing with when it comes to crowds and all that. But it just really hasn't been the case this year. I don't know if it's more of a player issue or if there's just been, you know, some coaching mistakes that have been made along the way uh, with coaching these new players. So, you know, that's why I said, again, it's so hard to pick a game like this because you we've seen Alabama in the past, but we know this year's Alabama team has been a little bit different than the prior teams. But that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Definitely a big game. Let us know down below what you think is going to happen. What is Alabama going to have to do? What is Tennessee going to have to do? Please subscribe and hit the notification bell. Uh, we can't you know, thank you guys enough for subscribing to the channel and giving us a lot of support in our recent videos. And we have a couple more games we're going to be doing this week, so definitely stay tuned for that. But with that being said, we'll see you all.